and welcome to Discovering Thailand. My name is Peter and this is an update video of my first six months of living here in Thailand. We'll quickly go through roughly what I've done up until now and what I'm going to be doing in the future. So stick by for that. First of all, I just want to thank everybody for watching my videos and for getting us up over 2,000 subscribers, which I'm super wrapped about. The channel is growing really well. Now I'll invite you to join the channel um, for just the cost of a cappuccino a month to help support the channel. Yeah, I really appreciate that. There's also links in, this, in the description below for buy me a coffee and PayPal and whatever other way you want to help support. Fantastic. Also, give us a thumbs up and your comments are welcome. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm here at the Pagoda Cafe in Chiang Mai. Just a nice quiet place beside the Ping River that I discovered just on Google Maps last night actually and it was really nice that I'll put a few photos up there in the corner um, the owners here were nice enough to turn the music down where I'm sitting here by the river uh, so I could do my recording and I'll just turn the camera quickly around and you can have a look at the river um, as you can see it's uh, flowing fairly swiftly it is the rainy season here uh, we're at the last day of August first day of September will be tomorrow and um, it's uh, yeah the river's getting high I've heard it does flood so we'll see what happens um, so let's have a look at um, what I've got a small list of things I took made a note of just the things to mention but I will try and keep the video short so I arrived on the 12th of February okay my channel has been going since just a, about a week before that I did my first video um, when I was still in Sydney, Australia, just before I left, uh, talking about the move and uh, you know selling up everything and so forth. When I arrived here on the 12th of Fem February day, I came straight up to Chiang Mai. Then I found a condo to rent. That was one of my first priorities um, because I just booked a, a hotel for the first uh, less than two weeks. But within, um, I think it was about 10 days on the 22nd of February, um, I was moved into a condo. And I'll give a big shout out to Perfect Homes. Their link will also be down in the description for um, their help in finding me a place. Um, highly recommend it. Just go in, see them, give them a list of what you're looking for, what you want, the area, type, size, all the details. They'll look at what's on offer and they'll say, right, I'll meet you here, meet you here, meet you there, and show you all the ones that suit your requirements and you'll find something like I did. Then, of course, the next thing was getting the visa I required for... Um, staying here my retirement which is an extension extension of state that um, process was put into place through um, assist type visa services and again they saved me a lot of um, frustration and time by going through an agent not having to think about all that side of things and get on with moving into my new condo buying things i needed getting familiar with the area and just sorting my stuff out while that was all happening. While that was happening, I managed to get my residence certificate. Uh, residence certificate was useful for, well, I was going to, at the time, looking at buying a motorcycle. And then, of course, you also need the residence certificate if you're getting a driver's license. Please, if you want to know more about those videos, go back through the playlist and you'll see that I've done videos on all these subjects, so all the information's there. And also, this video is, is not only about my experience and my first six months here, but this could be you. Um, I know a lot of people are planning to live and move over here and do a similar thing. And this is, hopefully, if everything works out, will we'll fall into place like it has so far for me. Or has it? We'll see. <laughs> so, with that certificate, I also got my driver's license. So, I got my motorcycle, Thai motorcycle license over here. Uh, quite easy to do. Um, walked in, paid, walked out. Um, simple no test or anything because I already held a motorcycle license and a vehicle license in my home country there was no reason to do retesting or anything like that um, I was also here for Songkran which is the big water festival they have all over Thailand fantastic to to see that um, did a video on that definitely worth worthwhile and uh, certainly uh, a lot of a lot of fun also that was a part of the um, the hot season so when I arrived here it was it was bloody hot I can tell you I mean all right I'm from Queensland uh, most of the time I, 
Well, I lived in Sydney before I came here for about a year, but before that I was living in Queensland. So I'm used to reasonably hot weather, but definitely not 37, 38 to 44, touching 45 degree temperatures every day for weeks. So quite a thing to get used to if you're coming over here to get through that the hot season like that. That was also part of the smoky season or the burning season which they have all across Thailand but, but particularly bad up here in Chiang Mai. It has a bad reputation for the terrible smoke and pollution up here which is completely justifiable. It, it got fairly bad. I don't have any respiratory problems but um, for anyone who suffers asthma and those sorts of things you, you would really suffer. Um, and it goes for a few months. I think it started in about the end of the middle of March, I would say, and went till about the, I would say, the early May. So a good couple of months, two and a half months of it. And there were, I would say, about in this particular year, about two weeks where it was really bad, where you, you didn't even want to go outside your condo. Um, yeah, yeah, so not good, but I survived through that, so that's okay. Um, I had my hair cut here and my head haircut and massage done uh, by a couple of lovely ladies at the hair salon. That video is also there in the playlist. I highly recommend, please go through and check out the videos. And then of course I rented a motor motorcycle. That link is also in the description of the company that I used then and I still use and I'm pretty much just month to month paying for that. Um, I'll be upfront, it cost me 2700 a month and that's for a 125 Yamaha little motorbike. I'm just going to cut the video here because look what we've got a military helicopter that's going to come flying right over the top of me and make a lot of noise. So I shall be back very shortly. Okay, sorry about that. There's a large military um, base up here and it seems quite often you see military helicopters probably bringing up important people from Bangkok and other areas for their conferences and meetings and so forth all right so what we're we up to i was going to buy a motorcycle um, but then because my budget's a bit low and i would have only had about say say 40 50 thousand baht to spend on a bike it wouldn't have got me as good a bike as what i'm renting and then of course there would have been registration and ongoing servicing it and um, insurance and everything else whereas the rental bike is covered with all of that so it was a cheaper option. The guy at the rental place was actually talking me into that. Um, I was actually going there originally to buy a motorcycle because they do sell them as well occasionally. So also we got all the visa stamps transferred into my new passport because my Australian passport expired while I'm here. Well, it doesn't expire yet, but it does. It expires next year. And because you need to have six months validity on a passport if you travel, not that I'm expecting to, but I'm something could happen I have to might have to whip back to Australia or something you, I figured I'll get it I'll renew it early and you can renew it as early as you want your passport you just do lose that time I managed to do that I got that done through the embassy I did it by post um, quite a simple process went through no problem at all and then when I got that back then I had to transfer my retirement visa extension of stay which is what it is so I keep when I say extension of stay, people know it as a retirement visa, but that's not what it's actually called. It does have a retirement stamp on the visa, but that's the reason of your extension of stay, is retirement, okay? Uh, if it was a, a working visa, it would have something there to do with that. So the stamps need to transfer it into the new one, it in, and then transferred and copied the uh, original entry stamp into Thailand, and the extensions I got because I came in on a tourist visa um, which are relevant now apparently because now you can get 60 day visa exemption on arrival so there's no point applying for a 60 day tourist visa before you leave. Um, the reason to get that amount was because it takes time to process uh, your visa and get all that stuff done. The stamps were done, that was fairly simple, it was a long day but that was my fault, I got there at a bad time. but. Um, that was a fairly simple process. Just take your new passport, your old one, fill out one piece of paper, hand it in, and then wait, <laughs> and wait, and wait, and wait, and then they'll do it for you. I did my first 90-day reporting. 
nowhere near the drama I was expecting. Um, the first one being, unlike others, is that you have to do it in person. You can't do it online. The next one I will probably attempt to do online and we'll see how that goes in a future video. But the first one was a piece of, was easy. I just showed up there, um, it was actually about three days. You can go a, up to two weeks before and a week after the date on your little piece of paper in your passport for your report day. Okay, so a week before, uh, two weeks before to a week after. That gives you time if you're traveling or whatever and to be back for that or time it when you're in that area doing your shopping, you call in. It literally took five minutes up here in Chiang Mai to have a drive-through and right next to the drive-through is a walk-through. Um, but I got on the drive-through on my little motor scooter, rode straight through there and I um, uh, just got to the window. At that stage I had my, I bought both passports because I thought he might want to see the original stamps in my old passport rather than my brand new passport with just those new transferred ones. That all worked out fine. So done, done, got my next piece of paper for my, when the date is, which is uh, obviously in another 90 days for my um, for the next report. I talked about the burning season. We're halfway through the list, so we're doing pretty well. Hospital visits is on my list. There's quite a few hospital visits. One, because I had a fairly major health issue just weeks before I came to Thailand with a pulmonary edema, which is a blood clot went through my heart into my lung and I literally nearly died. I, I rushed myself to hospital through emergency, got in and they suddenly, I didn't know what was happening, I thought I was having a heart attack. That's <laughs> what it felt like. And I couldn't breathe. It was like, it was like only getting 20% of the oxygen in, in each breath I took because I couldn't inhale any, because of the pain in my chest. Terrible experience. Anyway, to keep this video short, I survived, <laughs> I survived. Luckily, um, they put me on blood thinners for six months. And then in Australia, the doctor gave me a prescription so I could get six months worth because I was literally in two weeks time flying straight over to Thailand. If it had happened to me a week later, um, I wouldn't have been able to fly. I would have had to delay my flight coming over somehow because yeah, I, I wouldn't have been able to fly. So I came straight over here and now when I got here, I've been on blood thinners, um, those tablets, twice a day for the last six months. I just finished them last week. Okay, so I think as of tomorrow, it's been a week without taking blood thinners. I'm still good, all right? No edemas hit me, no um, suddenly pains in the chest or can't breathing, touch wood. And I live directly across the road from a hospital that already have my details because I went to the hospital, gave them all the information, told them what I'm on and what I went through. Their advice to me was two to three weeks after I come off the thinners to come back in for a blood test and they're going to do a, a complete blood test and fingers crossed I won't be on blood thinners for the rest of my life. But it, like I said it's been nearly a week now and I feel perfectly fine and I've had no problems so okay wish me luck on that. There were other things too like I had a rash come up on my wrist on my arm I went into the hospital to get, um, my feet were swelling, and they still are a bit actually. Uh, I don't know what's causing the fluid to build up in my feet and they're swollen. So um, getting out and walking and that sort of thing helps, but I'm trying to change my diet. But anyway, that gets on to the next subject, which is eating street food. So straight up, I, I, I go out, I used to, when I first got here, was go out to the street stalls, get my pad thai, get my chicken, my noodles, all my stuff, and just eat out at those street stalls. It was so cheap over here to do that. Then I started to go to a supermarket. Uh, there's a Rimping supermarket, which is specifically for foreigners. It stocks all the brands you're familiar with. So I started to do that and buy my wheat bix, my peanut butter, my, my stuff that I like, you know, that, you know, some of your home favorites. But then, of course, I went out and just recently, only a couple of weeks ago, thanks to my sister's advice, I bought myself an air fryer. Never had one before. I used to be micro, always, you know, the microwave will do it. My microwave now sits there. I keep my bread in the microwave. I hardly turn the thing on anymore. I use my, my, air, my um, air fryer, which is fantastic. And because I use the air fryer now, I go out and I buy my pork and chicken and stuff down at the local fresh market 
very very cheap fryer I'll put a couple of pictures of some of the results of my cooking and uh, obviously that's healthier than eating in the oils and whatever they use in the street stalls so now I would say that I eat indoors probably about four nights a week now and then of course uh, before the air fry I actually went out and bought myself a toaster toasters just aren't a thing here you can't buy four sliced, sliced toasters either they're all two sliced toasters but anyway that's okay so I bought that so I could have my toast and peanut butter in the morning or my toast and jam um, I won't say toast and ve Vegemite because I'm not real big on that but uh, yeah it's nice to have toast and scrambled eggs instead of bread with scrambled eggs so toast is getting a lot of use out of it as well but moving on down the list here I'm doing a lot of exploring around the countryside uh, as you'll notice by the videos you've seen and looking around the area now that I've got a motorbike and Chiang Mai is just overwhelmingly full of so many things to see I mean you just pick a direction take your time and it'll take you all day to get there because you could just stop off at so many places along the way I've been out to um, uh, the waterfalls um, some hiking tracks I've been out to the beach yes Chiang Mai has a beach you have got to check out that video <laughs> also um, the trains and the tunnels and the coffee shops everywhere like where I am now but everywhere and the Thai people and, and business people have such an imagination they're so creative with the places they design for the coffee shops and cafes it's just incredible I hate to imagine how many there are in, in, in and around, around Chiang Mai definitely exploring um, national parks um, enjoying the ride on the scooter I mean sometimes I do miss my Suzuki V-Strom 1000 I had back in Australia or my Kawasaki Ninja my plan when that talking about in the future we'll, we'll skip to that a little bit now is that um, I have a fair substantial amount of superannuation money that will come to me in about two and a half years and at that time I'll, I'll have enough money to buy a condo and buy myself a decent motorbike um, something that's an adventure touring bike so we can get out and uh, tour around Southeast Asia on the motorbike um, I've done that on in Australia and I want to do that over here other than that uh, yeah loving just getting out and enjoying it the other thing is that my hobby so I always tell people if you're going to come over here and retire particularly if you've just finished up working like I have what are you going to do with all the extra time on your hands I have a hobby all right I love building plastic models like your old Airfix and Tamiya motorbikes ships um, cars whatever it is tanks that's what I like doing I've got a whole setup I build and do all that I'll put a picture up on there for you at uh, my little model bench here that I work on um, also give a shout out to my YouTube channel called Oz Scale Modeling there you go if you're interested <laughs> but um, you can check that out as well um, that's just heading up towards 6,000 subscribers on that channel and fantastic group of people and uh, really enjoying that so that's my hobby I don't drink so I'm not the sort of person that's going to go and sit at the pub every afternoon or every day even though it's probably a bit more sociable but I do enjoy build, building models and stuff so and what I intend to do is to give them out to some of these fancy cafes if they've got a spare shelf somewhere I can pop it on so let's talk about the next six months the next six months whew, well a lot of it will be repeating what I've been doing so far uh, obviously the 90-day reporting goes on as usual your retirement visa uh, gets renewed every year so that'll be in May next year um, we're coming up to the, the tourist season here in Chiang Mai the busier time of the year which I haven't experienced and apparently it does get a lot busier up here so there'll be times where instead of me when I go out to a waterfall or I go out to certain places or a cafe like this where I'm the only person that may not happen in the next month or two just because of the sheer number of people around but we'll see I have to apologize for the noise in the background there seems to be some construction work going on but hey this is Thailand where can you find a quiet place you know not even here certainly I got away from the traffic noise didn't I <laughs> anyway so yeah the tourist season we'll see what happens um, the rain will stop in the next month or so and comes October November it's it's supposed to be really beautiful here so 
Um, I think it's beautiful here now if you can get out and it's not raining. And, but I will be doing a bit more further distance riding, maybe up towards Pai and the Burmese border and around areas like that where I know that maybe I can go a bit further distance without the fear of it getting caught in a rain storm coming home or you know maybe spend a night somewhere and make a, a two-day trip so things like that are future things to come the other thing I've written down on my list here is meeting people I want to say a big thank you and I really appreciate people who come up to me in the street and say hello to me I know they recognize me and they come over tell me they watch the channel and they thought they recognized me and it, it literally happens uh, almost every time I go out now so Soon I'm going to have to wear dark sunglasses and a baseball cap and to hide, but <laughs> no, it, it, it's a great, I really appreciate it. A few people I've met up with afterwards and we've had some conversations with and uh, it's really good. So really good inspiration um, when I do catch up to people, it's, it's good. Uh, there's quite a few that live in my own condo recognize me, you know, so yeah, it's good. It's good to be known. <laughs> And to my fellow YouTubers out there, there's, a, there's about half a dozen um, popular names here in Chiang Mai. Uh, a few of them I've met up with. A big shout out to them as well, you know. They're, they're, we're all doing our own thing, similar subjects, but we're all enjoying what we're doing and uh, providing something for, for the wider audience out there that might be planning to either come on, come on up to Chiang Mai or Thailand for a holiday or to live, you know sharing all of our experiences that's what it's about all there is really left to talk about now is the youtube um, like i said we've just passed 2000 subscribers channel's growing well some videos are really really popular particularly inf informative ones regarding visas and and those sorts of things i think i've got my retirement visa video there uh, is one of the most popular videos on the channel there's probably a, an average of uh, a dozen people every hour watching that goes up day by day um, because it's current information and it's it's a it's a subject that interests a lot of people the rest of it is uh, more tourist stuff and things that I'm doing around that I don't expect to get huge views for but I just enjoy doing it and sharing where I've been and what I'm doing so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying that so the channel is trickling along and you know there's a couple of subscribers coming in every day I want to thank everybody who's buying me a coffee, throwing in a PayPal um, donation or contribution to help with the channel is really good too. Also the fact that um, I've only got one member, I've only got one member, he needs company. We need a couple more people to join the channel. Like I said in the beginning, it's only the cost of a cappuccino a month to join and uh, that would be great, it helps. Uh, I really need to get a new camera. This camera I'm filming on right now is the Osmo Action first one that came out they're up to number four now I don't want the number four but I would like the number three camera um, which would be just what I need in, and then the money I save buying the th number three action camera I would spend on getting the microphones uh, there's mics called mic 2 and not only do they work for the for the video camera and on here but they also connect to your phone if you ever need to use that for a phone uh, and you can also use them as a webcam uh, on your computer so multi-use for those microphones and they're very good quality so like I say your contributes contributions go towards that um, the small amount trickles in each month from the advertising and monetization on YouTube goes towards that as well and very very much appreciated and I thank you all so much also a lot of you have mentioned uh, a few ideas of videos for me to visit uh, places worth seeing and so forth please put that down in the comments if, you, if there's a nice place that you've been a, a cafe someplace or a, you know a waterfall somewhere up here in Chiang Mai like I said I'm based here in Chiang Mai it's called discovering Thailand the channel because in the future I will be getting out of Chiang Mai and heading out and spreading my wings so to say to far afield covering other areas as well but for now there's just so much to see here it's just uh, just incredible thank you all again for watching thank you for um, don't forget to subscribe and it's free to subscribe give us a thumbs up to keep that algorithm going and uh, I'll, I guess I'll all see you in the next video I'm not sure where I'll be going next but um, 
I'm sure in a year's time it'll be interesting to see uh, where I'm at but so far everything's going really well I'm happy I have no intention of jumping on a plane heading back to Australia or scooting off to another country because I'm sick of it here no no I'm staying put but yeah I'm staying put and uh, I'm happy I'm really enjoying it here and uh, it's good to share all this with you guys and bring you guys along on this journey as well all right again i'm gonna go now <laughs> thank you all and uh see you in the next video bye for now cheers